look back, it's less than a minute later. There are police sirens in front of us. We don't know why, but fuck it. We're going to review another movie. Yep. So before we went to go see Jason Bourne, we traveled a good hour to Dallas in rush hour traffic and somehow made it to the early screening of Florence Foster Jenkins, the new comedy starring Meryl Streep, Hugh Grant, and Simon Hilberg. Who you were lucky enough to meet. For those of you who don't know, he plays Wallowitz on Big Bang Theory, and he was at this event. Now, we thought it was going to be a Q&A, but he had some schedule conflicts, and so he yeah, was only there to introduce... Like a press tour. Probably. He was only there to introduce the film. But, I mean, he wore a cowboy hat, because he's in Texas, and he made some okay jokes. I mean, I've never been really... I didn't think the jokes were hilarious, like everybody in the audience was doing, but he seemed like a really chill guy, he seemed like somebody who really enjoyed what he was doing. Yeah. And the great part about this was, we were, the, the press screening tells you to come at 6.15, now I had to take care of my little brothers until about 5, and I live about an hour away from where we're supposed to go. So I pick up Liam at work, and we rush over there. Uh, one of the roads, like the right lane, was packed from like three towns. Like, for three towns, the right lane was backed up. And so I'm like, fuck it, we gotta take this other tollway. So we drive all the way there, and somehow miraculously going like 80 miles an hour on a tollway, we get there. The movie's supposed to start at 6.45, and the press screening recommended. I'm like, alright, if you can't get here at 6.15, try to get here at 6.30. 6.30, I'm, I can see the theater down the street, Liam, who has the passes, jumps out of the car and starts sprinting, or sprinting slash jogging, I couldn't really I tell. Was, well, I was, it was more of a jogging, because I had, like, so much shit in my pocket, because I still had, like, my, my employee stuff from work, and I still had, like, a house key, there was, like, a lot of stuff in my pocket, so I was, like, okay, running as yeah. fast as I could, so I got, I ran aside, I'm like, I got to our lady, to the lady who was giving out the things. I went and grabbed seats in like the second row, which normally would suck, but we got to be pretty close to Simon Helberg. Which yeah, we did. Cool. And also, and this was the best part is after Daniel came in, and before we saw the movie, I went and went, I went to go take a piss, and I walked back in right as they were introducing Simon Helberg. So, and the thing is, did you cut in front of Simon yes. Helberg? <laughs> <laughs> and here's the best part. I was gonna say something like, hey man, I'm a big fan, because I liked Big Bang Theory when I was a kid. And I was gonna like say something, then I was like, wait, no, that's a douche thing to do. I don't want to be that guy. And then, but I, so I was gonna wait, but then the rep was like, okay, just go, 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 go. And so she was saying his name as I was walking out. So there was like one lady behind us who was looking at me, he was like, what the fuck? That's not Simon Helper. <laughs> <laughs> Drop Liam off right before I was supposed to take a left into the parking garage. But in front of it was this car that was just parked. This big, you know, SUV expedition looking thing. I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? Just get out of the way. I gotta get in this fucking garage. And out of the car hops out the reps and Simon Helberg. And I was like, wait. For a moment, it's like, god damn it, is that Ringo? <laughs> All of our fans, Twitter, Facebook, please tweet this video to Simon Helberg. He must understand what we went through. It's one of the better movies of the year. And it's this fantastic comedy about a woman who's an awful singer, but it's her passion and it's her just drive to embrace music and love music. And Simon Helberg plays her piano accompanist. Mm. And he's the funniest part of the movie. I think he's a great addition to this film and yeah. it was easily my favorite thing that i've seen him in and so like if i were to you know actually get out of my car to say hi to simon helberg i'm like hey i loved you as cosme mcmoon yeah before we go any further spoiler alert we're going to be spoiling some elements in the movie uh if you don't if you want to see this uh go in spoiler free you can go to the uh, non-spoiler segment review so just click on the time card right here and you'll get up to our sum ups and our scores out of six stars movie takes place in 1944 new york world war ii is going on yeah and florence foster jenkins is played by meryl street played by meryl street and she's the patron of these different clubs in new york city including the verdi club where, you know, like, 
every it's kind of like a variety show everything's going on yeah. hugh grant who plays her husband st Clair baycliff is kind of like this shitty actor and he's reciting monologues but foster jenkins <laughs> this movie starts out with this little skit of Stephen Foster, this guy. I don't think they're related in any way. Did, I, 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 I was not. I was not sure. Anyway, it's this guy trying to write "Oh Susanna," and Foster Jenkins plays like this angel of inspiration. They're literally hoisting her up and lowering her down on the stage, and it's really cheesy. It's hokey as shit. But everybody there who are, you know, white, aristocratic, and near close to death are having a grand old time. Foster Jenkins, who is kind of this heiress in New York because of her late husband, has been basically spending her entire money supporting the arts in New York City. I mean, she knows everybody, every composer, every vocal coach. If you're in any way involved with music, classical music or opera, she knows who you are and she not only loves you, adores you, and just praises the fact that you're trying to keep music alive because in her words, you know, music is her life. To points where, like, she can be sick in the movie and just listening to a song brightens her mood and just listening to a song you can palpably see her face light up it's it's honestly inspiring at times yeah and i mean look we can say meryl streep is great in this movie you know meryl streep's gonna be great in this movie because she's meryl fucking streep um but i was really surprised by how well she did the comedy in this movie like it was funny because the character was it was i think it would be really tough to tough to nail because you have to she has to be like funny without being annoying and she has to be kind of like, a relatable character without being like so tragic that it's like you become distracted by the tragedy exactly and you have to be able to empathize with her but also kind of feel sorry for her. it was a really complex character and she i think did really well there's so many scenes where it's just her facial expressions that have to and Something that I thought that Street pulled off that not a lot of actors or actresses can really pull off is innocence. Whenever you love something this much, whether it be music or art or sports or whatever, there's this childlike joy that comes with it. And Meryl Streep is channeling that throughout the entirety of this film. And I thought that at the crux of her character makes her interesting. The fact that she loves music, everything be damned. She says, you know, that's who we are as musicians. We'd rather go without bread than go without Mozart. And it does, it's not pretentious in any way because she backs it up. It's funny because we say Meryl Streep and people just automatically assume Oscar, but this but is honestly- this is a role that she deserves it. Yeah, this is a role where she deserves it. It's by far one of the best uh, performances I've seen so far this year. She was simultaneously hilarious, tragic, inspiring, and just fun to be around. She sounds like a squirrel being attacked by a cheese grater. She sounds like a monkey getting a rim job. I was laughing like my ass off during this movie. The first scene where she um, she's training with her vocal coach, who's kind of, who's like this famous vocal coach, who's kind of like. He's obviously yeah, yeah. kind of in on the act the that he's pretending that she's like really everybody great. is. Yeah, that yeah. like everyone's Hugh Grant's there, and but it's Simon Hilberg's first time playing the piano for her. Yeah. It's the he, first time he hears her sing. Yes, um, and so he's like taken aback because he thought he was, you know, working with like an actual good musician. We see a lot of the film through Hilberg's point of view because he's just as confused and taken aback as we are. Yeah, and his expressions are to die for i'm thinking yeah. like groucho marx level of just <laughs> facial like it's all in the face and just tiny twitches here and there and there's a bit of vaudeville and there's some slapstick in there yeah that he's really really good at i felt like there was an innocence to his character as well because yeah. he was a guy who was he was just trying to make it as a musician he's kind of just been playing at like bars and stuff and so that first scene when he plays piano for male street it's funny because all the other musicians there are kind of mocking him because he's playing really kind of this really simple thing 
but that's it's the simplicity and the beauty in it that sort of captures Meryl Streep's heart. Yeah, and that's and so that was really interesting. The fact that even though they're such different people, that the fact that they share a love for music, even though she's terrible and he's really good, it's like that connection. All the music you hear is live. Yes. Simon Helberg actually knows how to play the piano this well, and he's really fucking good. Yeah, he's really good. Like, congrats, man. God, God damn, like, he just... It's one of those movies that I think will appeal to the entire family. Yeah. Because it is a slower movie, and there are jokes that are very dry British humor. It's made by the BBC. Yeah. But, you know, whenever you hear her sing in her squawk and screech and ah, 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 like I can't even do it. Yeah, that that Daniel was actually better. You'll laugh and she's also such a sweet wonderful character that you can't help but really like following her. This movie turns you into an asshole. Yeah. The first time you hear her sing, you're laughing at her. You're you're like, "Oh my god, this woman is terrible." Yeah. But as soon as you find out that She's wearing a wig half the time. Yeah. And she's debilitate. She has a debilitating illness. Guess what? Syphilis. Yeah. This woman is suffering from syphilis that most doctors of the era say that she shouldn't have lived 30 years with syphilis, let alone 50. Yeah. So then you're like, wait, now I'm an asshole because I was laughing at the first part. This movie is directed by Stephen Frears, who directed a film called Philomena that came out in 2013, which I saw and. Uh, it was nominated for Best Picture. I personally loved it. It was in one of those movies similar to this one that, like, I went in after it had been nominated for Best Picture. I didn't see it before. And I went, it's like, okay, now it's my duty. I have to go see this because it was nominated. I went with my mom. Went to this theater. There's a lot of old people there. And I was thinking, all right, I'm just going to get this out of the way. But it was similar to this movie. There was a great comedy to it. And that film was the uh, back and forth between Steve Coogan and Judy Dench. And this one, it was mainly, it was sort of the same thing with Simon Helberg and Meryl Streep. I'd yeah. say that this one is funnier whereas that one was more dramatic and even though I, de I prefer Philomena it was I think if you like that movie you're gonna like this one because and it surprised me in the same way of like yes it's kind of a, uh, it's not it's not skewed towards our demographic it is not but it's there's a universal quality to it just about you know if you're ever into art or if you've ever honestly if you've ever worked hard at something and even if you haven't been good at it it's it's sort of about that. Hugh Grant has this line where he paraphrases a quote from Beethoven, which it's debated whether Beethoven said this, but you can for he says, you can forgive a few wrong notes, but to play without passion is unforgivable. Right. So that motif is carried throughout the entire film. And let's talk about Hugh Grant, because Hugh Grant, now the more I think about it, Hugh Grant's got a equally as complex and difficult role to handle yeah because he's playing the second husband of foster jenkins he's a good 25 years her junior yeah and to the point where when it he's first introduced as foster's as florence's husband there's a woman in the back that's like oh my because she has syphilis they don't like They've never had sex. He has this younger uh, girlfriend played by Rebecca Ferguson from, from uh, Mission Impossible, yeah. uh, which I wasn't really into that part of the story. I felt I really like Rebecca Ferguson as an actress. I think yeah. she's really awesome. I appreciated what she was doing with her character. It was very much the yeah. the side chick kind of scorned. There's like a weird understanding of sorts that because they're in a sexless marriage it's more Hugh Grant describes it as a marriage of the spirit yeah and uh, there is an element where you might be thinking did he just marry her for the money because he was a failed actor too mm -hmm. and so he's like all right so why did you hook up with this woman but they do have good chemistry together. You really yeah. do buy that they really care for and love one another. What's amazing is like there are points like some of the stuff when you realize like what's going on with him and Brooke Ferguson it's like man this guy's really despicable but then yeah. at the end of the movie you realize yeah he, whatever he did he still cares about Meryl Streep and he's 
the only one and he's done so much for her and he's yeah really you know he supported her 100% all the way and it's really it's really sweet especially their their last scene together you'd think like how does this woman who has such an awful singing voice like get in with people who have played Carnegie Hall and who are world famous musicians it's because Hugh Grant Whenever she puts out a live performance, whenever she goes to a concert, Hugh Grant decides to bribe all the reviewers that he can to give positive reviews. So it's kind of like the Emperor's New Clothes, so she never finds out what people really think of her. And I mean, he's talking to everyone. He's screening people. He's literally bribing everyone just to keep this ruse going. Just and like one of the Marvel, most, right? Pretty much, right? Okay. I mean, I, I would, got a fat check from Marvel for saying yeah. that Civil War was a four-star movie. I'm sorry, this side rant. If you think Marvel is paying critics, you are stupid. If you think Marvel is paying critics, just tell them to send more money. The word out is that she's really good, which is good because he's making her feel good, but eventually because there's this hype around her, eventually people's having are end up seeing her for real. Uh, yeah. And she gets ended up invited to Carnegie Hall. Not invited. She books yeah. a show books at it. Carnegie Hall and gives out 1,000 tickets to the veterans and soldiers because she wants to support them. Yes. Which is actually like the way it's done. It's it, really sweet. Yeah, but. I know. It's an extraordinarily noble attempt from her, but throughout this you're just sitting there going good god they're gonna kill her yeah and i really liked um how the scene was handled because at first they're booing her and then they sort of start getting in on the act and start enjoying it uh -huh. um and to me this is kind of my this was the highlight of the movie this was the climax in the movie and th it was fantastic the, 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 the just the back and forth within that scene between uh, Meryl Streep and Simon Hubbard was fantastic. For me, at least, the movie kind of takes a downward spiral from there. It's not, like, awful, but it's, like, that was so clearly, like, the best part, like, the climax of the movie, that it does kind of meander. Yeah, when she's playing Carnegie Hall and the secret is basically out, it's kind of the same way Whiplash broke my suspension of disbelief with the car crash scene, where... After she flops majorly on stage, I couldn't buy that a rational human being would not be in on the joke. And the movie does explain why she's not, but to me that kind of just broke it off. And so I thought everything that happened after that just really didn't work and kind of dragged it out a little bit too long. Yeah. In no way does that make this a bad movie. It's right. just... It's just a kind of, in my yeah. opinion, it has kind of a weak third act. The last scene in the movie is really good. Oh, yeah. Um, but that everything between that, the Carnegie Hall, and that, it's like, oh, she's finding out about the reviews. And but then the she liar has... is revealed. Blah, yeah. Blah, blah. We're doing this really quick because we're running out of batteries. So if you clicked on the time code, welcome to the spoiler free section. And we'll do really, really fast sum ups of the movie. Basically, Florence Foster Jenkins is the Emperor's new clothes with a lot of heart, a lot of comedy, and one of the best performances of the year from Meryl Streep. Huge, gr Hugh Grant and Simon Helberg give great supporting performances. This is a film that I think is for the entire family, and you should definitely, definitely, definitely watch it. Five and a half stars out of six, easy. Okay, I had a great time with this movie. Um, thought it was really funny, really sweet, really sincere. Uh, Mel Streep is fantastic as always, did great with the comedy. Simon Helberg, uh, I've always been a big fan of him on TV, but he really proved that he would be a great movie star and really work in these sort of character roles. Third act kind of dropped off for me, so that's why I'm going to go a little bit lower, but I still definitely recommend this for families. I'm going to give this four and a half out of six. All right, four and a half. So, half cock verdict, five out of six. Definitely go see this movie. Yep. All our extra content is in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and y'all have a very good night. We'll be back with maybe Suicide Squad or Nerve or Captain Fantastic. Just watch the Bourne video for that. We're running out of time. You guys have a good night. See you later. Bye.